Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tips and Tricks. As always, this is Team Sixpack. I am Caboose. General Mills. Today we're going to talk about some pretty cool little tiny helmet mods that you guys can do to your helmets to kind of help improve um, your airsoft experience. The first one that I wanted to go after because Mills is ten times cooler than mine is a little lens protector. Now, this is obviously applies just to contour lenses as... Can I see that? Can I see that? Can I see that? As this applies to GoPros, you already have a lens cover, it doesn't matter. But, um, in order, in order to mount it. But this is in case you lose your lens cover, okay? This is just something really cool that I did. It's not really cool, but this is just something simple that I did that really, really helps it. I bought a $10 lens cover and it fell off, and I had a spare replacement lens. So, what I ended up doing was making a lens cover that was better than the lens cover that I had before. Um, what I actually did was I cut out the inside of the lens protector, um, like the rubber case that comes with your camera. I cut the inside of it out, and then I took the spare replacement lens, which the lenses you can buy them for like four dollars on Amazon, or you can just make them. Uh, I've seen people actually just like make the lenses that just cover this. Is you basically go ahead, take the lens, put it on top, and then if you guys can see all the sticky stuff that's there, that's duct tape. I just duct taped it to the side of the lens, to the side of the camera, and then I put this lens cover around it so that it kind of cushions and, and kind of adheres to it. Basically what I did was I just took the cover and then it kind of like just, it's rubber, so it sticks to the side of the camera and kind of holds down the duct tape and kind of holds the lens in place. And I just put it on the side, and this is why sometimes you guys see my camera footage where like the lens cover covers it up, that's because it it stretches, it's always stretching, so sometimes it might cover it up, but for the most part it doesn't do it, it does a really decent job. And bada bing bada boom, you got a decent lens cover. Um, it literally cost you four dollars and it's an easy thing to replace rather than buying the fifteen dollar lens covers or the more expensive lens covers that you have. This one has only fallen off once <laughs> and that was just about fifty minutes ago when we were doing the Crytek footage. But other than that, it's never fallen off in a game as long as you make sure that it's attached well and it's not um, pushing up over the lens, it'll be good to go, and it will never fail you. I don't think I've ever had a problem with this thing falling off in a game, and it's always done a good job of being able to protect my lens in case it gets shot at, which has happened. Um, so with that established, let's go over to, oh, and another thing. Um, this is another modification that was done to my helmet. Uh, I think I'm going to talk about this now because you want to consider doing this, is I actually have my, my face mask attached to my helmet, my mesh mask, okay? Um, basically what happened is all these helmets, they come with these little tabs over here. Yeah. Case in point, these little tabs, Ooh, little, uh, 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 that little tab right over there, okay, comes out, obviously. All you got to do is know how to sew, and you can basically sew your mesh mask over to your, um, uh, your helmet, and there you go. Everything is attached to your helmet. My fans attached to it. My goggles are attached to it. Everything is attached to my helmet. I used to have to take off 15 different things in order for me to do anything. But now everything is just attached to here, and it makes it so much easier. And this is held in place by a little Picatinny rail and the contour Picatinny rail. All right, now let's you get to the cool part. You want to talk about your fan? Oh, yeah. This is a Action Mike Cyclone fan. Oh, no, a Cyclone Mike Action fan. Um... It's a really nice little fan. I love it. It does a great job of protecting my head. Not really. It just keeps it warm, uh, keeps it cold, <laughs> and it takes away all the fog that goes into my lens. So basically, I, I routed my fan so that I cut out pieces of styrofoam, and then I just basically put the hose through it, and it goes, and I basically pull it into my fan, for, uh, pull it into my goggles from behind, and it takes away all the fog, and it keeps my face cold. Uh, it takes my face nice and... Uh, um, air conditioned. Air conditioned. <laughs> but the only problem that I do have with it is in order to access it, you need to touch that tiny little itsy bitsy button, which can become a massive pain in the butt. And it runs on AAA batteries. And it runs on AAA batteries, so it does not last that long. Um, four so, hours. Yeah. Long time. Yeah, four hours. Which, But like, if you have long days, it's a pain in the ass to go ahead and change batteries. So Rick here did something to really improve his... Uh, Cyclone Mike and his airsoft experience. And this is something that he did all by himself. So, everybody give a round of applause. Whoa. 
Uh, but it's really, really cool, and you guys are going to like this. This is something that he added to his cyclone mic, which really helped his... Uh, it actually didn't cost me that much money either, because, I mean, I had all the parts, but yeah. most of them. Oh, these fans, by the way, cost 35 bucks. Yeah, so That's it. Um, I had the fan on top of my helmet, just like Mike has his. I have the tube running in, so it comes out here, goes right into my goggles. Now, the things that really bothered me were... One, the AAA batteries, so four hour runtime. Uh, two, the tiny switch when you're playing with gloves. You know, sometimes it's really hard to just find that switch, and when you're on the field and you're getting shot at, you don't want to take too much time. And three was the wires being all on top of the helmet. It was just like, you know, one, you, one you tree hit, branch. Yeah, one tree branch, and that wire's ripped out of your fan. So um, the things that I did was I. First of all, I took the battery box off the fan so that way I could get the wires inside because the battery box won't fit through these portholes. And um, I actually changed the battery box out to and double you, A's. If you notice, his is clearly a lot bigger than mine. Yeah. So. Um, and that is what she said. <laughs> it's, um, it runs on four double A's, whereas his runs on four triple A's. They're the same amount of voltage. It's just you get more amps with the double A's. So those of you that don't know, that's more longevity. So you get, I haven't tested it yet, but you'll probably get, you know, six, eight hours out of this, whereas you get four out of that. Um, then I took the wires from the box, and I took one wire and I sent it to the fan, and then I sent the other wire through the back of my helmet, and I put a switch and I installed it into my dummy distress marker. And so, so when you flip the switch, fan turns on and it turns off. And the other thing is, I installed the box, so I have a kill switch. I guess if you could say if uh, shit hits the fan, you just hit this switch and this is completely dead. And the other good thing about that is two things. One, if you have an electrical circuit and you're worried about getting shocked, that's great. Second problem, uh, second thing that's really important is if you store it. If you haven't noticed, this button's a lot bigger. So if you put the button in your backpack or like, you know, you put your helmet back in your bag and it hits it, you don't get turned on and you don't drain your batteries. This master switch will kill it where turn it off, hit the master switch, turn it back on, nothing happens. All right, so it kills the juice, which really makes it a lot easier when you're trying to store your helmet. Um, the other cool thing about it too is that this is going to be for future projects that he wants to do. I'm oh by the way I'm converting. I'm going to have him convert my helmet into this. Um, all he needed was some extra wiring, some soldering, a new master switch, and a new box, and he was good to go. So and I mean I, I had this distress marker already. Um, yeah. So the distress marker was fourteen bucks. Um, I had a second fan, so I didn't pay for any wiring. I didn't yeah. buy any wiring. Uh, the box, the battery box itself was $2.50, and the switch, which, the rocker switch, which is up here, was $3. And then I bought a soldering kit for $10. Yeah. So all in all, I went to Radio Shack and I paid 18 bucks yeah. to do this. And it took me about an hour to figure it all out. Yeah. Not bad. No, not bad at all. And it's really, the cool thing about it too is... He's going to try eventually digging out this, this big box over here. This all has plastic in it, so he's going to dig it out so he can put additional AA batteries in there in case his, bat his box does die. He can just switch it in. Yeah. And be good to go. So it definitely works, I think. The other thing that's cool about AA's is since it takes the same amount of amps Char uh, as bolts. Uh, bolts, is that if you put two batteries in there, it'll still work. You can run on two batteries. I believe so. Yeah. So if you you don't need to have four triple A's batteries, if you have, t if you could store two double A batteries in this and then put it in, it might not run as long, but you could probably get another hour or two out of it before you know you have to go back and put it a full new set in, which does make it a lot easier. Um, but yeah, that's that's our tech and that's our tip and trick video. Um, some real simple stuff that you could do. Like I said, all this was was a spare lens and a cover that was already here in duct tape, and it's worked very fine for me. He just got $18 worth of equipment. And if you already have a soldering kit, it's more like $8 worth of equipment. 
and he was good to go. You know, all you had to do was rewire his fan into it, and, you know, he already had the parts for it. This is $15. The action mic is $35. Soldering kit was 10 And then 8 for all the extra uh, amenities that he needed, like the wire, the heat shrink, and I think that was it. And he was good to go, man. So these are just some simple things that can help your airsoft experience and make it easier. That's the whole point of it. It's not meant to freak anybody out or, like, you know, it's not meant to cost you a lot. When we do these videos... Our little tips and trick videos are just simple ways that your airsoft experience can be better without having to spend a ton of money. Because you want to spend a lot of money on your your extra gear, your extra firepower, your extra play carry, all that kind of stuff. You shouldn't have to worry about spending money on additional fans or like you know spending a ton of money on batteries or having to spend um, uh, a bunch of money on lens covers. Because the actual lens protector for this, this is good in the rain. This camera is okay in the rain. It, it, it can deal with it. But if you actually see the waterproof case for this thing, it's 50 bucks. The legit waterproof case for this is 50 bucks. And I didn't see a need for that because I wasn't diving in the ocean with this thing. So I just bought a $4 replacement lens, put it on there, and did this, and you're good to go. And you have a thing that's just as good as, you know, the more expensive stuff that's out there. You know, same thing with this. All he did was buy a $13 or $14 distress marker and just needed the wiring, the, the heat shrink, the solder, obviously, and the soldering kit, and he was good to go. So, you know, just cheap ways of doing it. Um, so we really hope that you guys like this video and that it helps you guys out some way, shape, or form. I mean, is there anything else you want to add? Um, do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, do it yourself. Um, that's definitely the main thing. The more that you guys do on your own equipment, the cheaper it is. It's like It's like making lunch every day. Rather than going out and going to a restaurant every single day for lunch, if you just make it at home, you're going to save a lot more money by the end of the week. And you're also going to learn how to basically provide for yourself. It's the same exact thing with this. If as long as you do it by yourself or you have friends that can help you do it, or if you're really that bad with a wrench that you're going to kill yourself with it, you know somebody that's like, you know, a teammate or somebody that can help you out with it, that's great. Um, as long as you do that, guys, it helps you out because now you know how to be able to handle it yourself. You know how to take care of your own gear. And at the same exact time, it saves you money. So, and I mean, also, you know, if you do it yourself and like, the thing is you get it the way that you want it. Like when I saw the fan, I had it strapped on top of the battery box. I looked at it. I was like, what are all the issues with this? And I was like, what can I fix to make this better? Mm -hmm. And because I fixed all those problems myself, I have a great helmet that I really like. So... Yeah, if, you know what, if you do things yourself, it really pays off in the end. And also when things go wrong, you most likely will know How what's fix wrong it. with it. <laughs> yeah, and that goes a big long way too. I love my acorn. Look how cute my acorn is. It's so cute. I'm sorry, I got a new scope and I'm very happy with it. Um, but yeah, guys, that's anything else you want to add? Nope. All right, drop your mag.